Hi, I'm Summer Seath and I'm the Administrator for Lancashire and South Cumbria Primary Care Training Hub. I'm here with Corrie Llewellyn talking about the support offices available for the NHS staff. Hi, I'm Corrie Llewellyn and I'm the uh, Clinical Quality Assurance Lead for the Lancashire South Cumbria Primary Care Training Hub um, and we're going to be discussing the offers with uh, Summer today. We're powered by the Morecambe Bay Primary Care Collaborative and we are part of the North West Training Hubs. We're here today helping you manage your own health and well-being while looking after others. The NHS is offered to you now more than ever. You deserve a comprehensive package of emotional, psychological and practical support. A range of guides, apps and events to support the well-being of you and your team is available at www.england.nhs.uk slash people. Now I do know, Corrie, that some of the apps and services we are going to cover today, they do have an end date in regards to the extended access within the NHS. However, they are recommended apps and there are free versions, versions that you can try out yourself. Um, they are available externally as well. So we're going to give you an overview today, a bit of extra information of what's available. So one of the offers um, for help now is a staff support line. Whatever your worries, trained advisors can help you with signposting and confidential listening. So you can call them on 0800 069 6222. Alternatively, you can text FRONTLINE, all capitals, to 85258 for support 24 hours via a text. There is also a bereavement support line, which has got confidential bereavement support operated by the Hospice UK and free access between 8am and 8pm seven days a week. And there's a team of fully qualified, trained bereavement specialists available to support with you with bereavement and wellbeing issues relating to loss experience through your work. You can call them on 0300 303 4434. There is also available under the Help Now offers there is a team of fully qualified and trained professionals, all of whom are Tagalog speakers, ready to help you at our NHS Bereavement and Trauma Line for Filipino staff. This assistance is available from anywhere in the country and is provided by Hospice UK. All calls will be treated in the strictest confidence and this will be explained to you when you call. This service is available seven days a week, 8am to 8pm. You do not need a referral. To book a consultation, call 0300 303 1115. What online support and counselling is there at the moment for our staff summer? So currently the virtual staff common rooms is available. By joining you will have time to reflect, share frustrations and experiences, find ways to cope with how COVID-19 is affecting your life at home and at work. I know that these offers are, are available till the end of March and then there's going to be a pause on those virtual common room offers to watch this space for more. What about the counselling support then, Summer? So we have at the NHS counselling support, a free service developed and funded by the Association of Christian Counsellors who are offering up to 10 online or telephone counselling sessions to people working within the NHS who are directly impacted by COVID-19, people working in residential care homes who have been impacted by caring for those with COVID-19 and anyone who has been bereaved during this time. This confidential service is open to people of all beliefs and you can ask to be matched on ethnicity. There's some really good support offers. So one of the other uh, support summer is the Wellbeing Support Service, project5.org. Oh, yeah. um, they make free one-to-one -one confidential support sessions available to NHS people. There's an on online booking system which gives staff access, free one-to-one -one support online from a team of accredited clinical psychologists and mental health experts. And it seems really good on there. Yeah, I think that one-to-one -one support with a, with a professional team is absolutely brilliant as available on an offer to NHS staff. In December 2020, NHS England and NHS Improvement launched a four-month pilot of relationship support with Relate for NHS staff. This is really good and it's been really useful for staff, uh, but I've noticed that on the 1st of April, um, this comes to a, an end and is being paused. The NHS are continuing the dialogue with Relate, so it is in development. So... I've noticed a bit about myself that I am um, I'm on my phone a lot more and I'm using a lot more apps at the moment and it's really good that the NHS are offering different apps to NHS staff so should we go through some of those somewhere it'd be good. The offer of free access to a range of mental health and wellbeing apps for our NHS staff has been extended until the end of March and um, these apps can support 
you or your colleagues, uh, manage stress and anxiety, build resilience, aid better sleep, and take a moment just to be mindful. One of the first apps, Corey, is Headspace, and I've actually used this before myself. It's a science-backed app in mindfulness and meditation. It provides unique tools and resources to help reduce stress, build resilience, and aid better sleep. Um, I've especially noticed the meditation bits, they are absolutely brilliant. I know it's quite popular um, across the whole of the UK. I've, I've got friends that use it as well. Such a brilliant app for the NHS to get involved with as well. Yeah, the Headspace one's really good, Summer, and that free access is available for the NHS staff until the 31st of December 2021, which is really good. So another one of the apps is uh, Daylight. It's a smartphone based app that provides help to people experiencing symptoms of worry and anxiety using evidence based cognitive behavioural techniques, voice and animation. New users can sign up to this one until the 31st of March. Um, and all NHS accounts will remain active in, for 12 months after this. One of the things that I've really been struggling with over the uh, lockdown is, is sleep. But the Sleepio app is really good because it's clinically evidence based sleep improvement program and it's fully automated and highly personalised using cognitive behavioural techniques to help improve poor sleep. And I've really found that really useful. So similar to the Daylight app, the Sleepio app, new users again, you need to sign up before the 31st of March and you'll remain active to tw for 12 months after then. Um, so again, with the Sleepio app, get signed up before the end of the month. Unmind is another popular app that I've heard of um, externally to the NHS as well. Um, it's great that, that the NHS has got involved with Unmind. It's a mental health platform that empowers staff to proactively improve their mental well-being. It includes digital programmes designed to help with stress, sleep, coping, connection, fulfilment and nutrition. This offer is extended until the 30th of June 2021. So a bit more time until the summertime to sign up for this one. One of the apps that's really useful is the Stay Alive app. This is a suicide prevention resource for the UK. It's packed full of useful information and tools to help you stay safe in a crisis. You can use this if you're having thoughts of suicide or if you're concerned about someone else who may be considering suicide. And I think this is really key at the moment, considering the rates of suicide and the, the way that COVID has affected everybody's mental health. 100%, Corrie. I know during lockdown, lots of people have suffered uh, areas where there's been a lot of an increase is domestic violence. Bright Sky is a free download mobile app providing support and information for anyone who may be in an abusive relationship or those concerned about someone they know. This app is really good. It goes across the board and it's available to use in Polish, Punjabi and Urdu. Anyone suffering from domestic violence obviously can seek help with this or if you're concerned about anyone, you can obviously sign them up for the app. Brilliant. I really like the idea of the Bright Sky um, app being available in different languages as well. Um, that's just great for it being so inclusive um, for people who do speak other languages who may find it more comfortable listening in their own language. One app that's tailor-made is City Parents and that's tailor-made for parents. An online programme includes positive and practical support for working parents delivered through expert-led webinars, seminars, advice, peer insights, online articles, blogs and podcasts. This aims to help working parents, those with caring responsibilities, develop their skills, enhance family life, improve well-being and support the work-life balance. This has, been this has been really essential for most NHS workers, especially in the fact that the schools have been closed. That's great, Corey. I mean, we all like to listen to a podcast, obviously. Um, so obviously if you're listening today and you are a parent, um, if you're dealing with homeschooling, if you're dealing with anything during lockdown for the future, City Parents is just brilliant. Um, so yeah, if you're listening now to a podcast, sign up to that app. They've got podcast blogs, mm -hmm. all sorts of resources and um, online articles that you can get involved with. Another wellbeing resource is the financial health and wellbeing support. We recognise that it's a difficult time for NHS people and we know that financial concerns has consistently been in the top five reasons our people call the free support helpline run by the Samaritans. The NHS has partnered with the Money and Pension Service to bring you financial wellbeing support to help you manage your finances at home. So you can join one of our online financial wellbeing events, visit the Money and Pension Service for support, guidance and tools. This, this has been really useful, Summer, and even if um, you've not got any uh, money worries, some of the support that they offer you is really good just to get your money in, in order and get all your finances sorted out. 100%. I'm tip top on my finances and budgets and everything. Um, I'm sure most of you listening are. 
I mean, keeping an eye on your finances, your income, your spending, especially during lockdown, I think everyone's been able to focus a lot more on their budgets and how they save. So the money advice service sounds like a brilliant, you know, a brilliant source for everyone. One of the resources I wasn't, I didn't know about is Places to Be. They've offered an online program of expert support and resources for key workers, including all NHS colleagues to support mental health and well-being of key workers and their children. The program consists of free webinars, um, art room resource packs for the children and parents and carers to craft and create together. The webinar covers recovery and self-care, understanding and managing anxiety in uncertain times and understanding loss and bereavement. For me, this is really important because I can see how the children, my own children on a personal level, have actually struggled with the lockdown and um, not being able to see the friends and ways that they've been more creative in the time that they've had to spend at home. All families are sort of um, experiencing the, the sudden change of people's lifestyles, homeschooling, even if you are a key worker and your children have had to go to school, the school environment has been completely different throughout lockdown. The usual friends aren't there. Um, it's just understanding how to have those conversations at home and um, having those resources. We're not all qualified teachers at the end of the day. So it, it's been a, a very different year for everyone. So that's a brilliant resource there for our staff. I suppose in terms of looking at all the resources that are available, one of the areas that we haven't covered is substance misuse and gambling support. And I know that's been at the forefront of with people having more time on their hands that they've actually and worries they've led to more unsocial behaviours. 100 percent. I think the NHS are recognising the, the increasing pressures on their staff. They've put together a range of information on substance misuse and gambling support available for a number of organisations. If you aren't aware, you may be suffering from this yourself, you may know someone suffering, and um, it's always good to understand what they actually mean. So substance abuse or misuse can severely affect a person's physical and mental health and can impair their ability to function. It can equally cause harm to others around them. There are a range of services and helplines that can provide support for those who may need someone to talk to. Problem gambling can have a devastating impact on individuals and families in all areas of life, including relationships, physical and psychological health and well-being, work and self-esteem. There is help available not only for gamblers, but also for their friends and family. These sorts of unsocial behaviours can not only affect yourself, but people around you. If so, yeah, if you do know someone or you are suffering yourself, please do have a look at the resources available on www england.nhs.uk slash people there's a range of different helplines and resources you can find on there so I, I went to the website and had a look at all the different resources that are available uh, there is a wide range of the health and well-being guides they've worked with experts to develop 20 short guides to support you with skills and new ways to improve your experience of work they cover lots of topics getting a good night's sleep personal resilience support for line managers guidance on how to be a compassionate leader leader during a bereavement and tips on how to run your own 10 minute pause space. Now, some are, I've really enjoyed using these pause spaces. They're really good. And those 10 minutes in a day to just take that time out for yourself have been vital for me to actually carry on working and have my resilience and actually support my team in being resilient as well. A hundred percent. I think we do get into that sort of um, mind frame and that sort of work mode where we just keep working on and sometimes we don't take a 10 minute pause space ourselves and um, there is those sort of work environments where you know you can make a joke saying oh I didn't have a good night's sleep or you do sort of make little jokes about things that you are struggling with and you don't realize that you actually do need to take that 10 minute pause space and think I need to work on this so those those guides are brilliant to find support. I think one of the other things to remember as well because a lot of us are working from home and when you're working from home you often forget to take uh, a heads up and go and have five minutes away from the computer or with the work that you're doing and it's just remembering that those pauses those guides are there to do that support while you're working from home and doing all the activities that you would normally do in an office where you would have that tea break with a colleague or or you'd uh, go away from your desk to a different meeting so it means that if you use these guides you're not then stuck at the desk for the for the hours that you're at work yeah, definitely. I know when we were talking the other day, I sort of mentioned something like, oh, I would normally bump into you and make you a brew. Um, but yeah, times are just different for many of us working from home or even if you have been, especially within the NHS, working long hours, working overtime, not having that 
that even second to stop and think. Um, so yeah, these are these are absolutely brilliant and essential, and they are available all day, every day, all night, every night, whatever your working hours are. Um, you you know, it's at your fingertips really. You don't need to worry about calling those helplines if you feel like that's something you can't do. Um, have a look at the guides, have a quick read, take your brain away from looking at the phone. Sometimes the app might not the apps might not be for everyone. They are a lot more accessible for people who who want to have a look on there, but you know, these guides are there in front of you on a computer screen. So Corey, support for leaders. We've got plenty of leaders within the NHS. What support have we got available? So some of the support includes one-to-one -one coaching and mentoring support sessions, leadership support circles, there's 10 evidence-based behaviours for leading through COVID-19 and beyond. There's also support for executive leaders, which includes leadership stories and reflections, one-to-one -one psychological support, chief executive common rooms and virtual action learning sets. And like we discussed before, you can find this all on the links on the website. We'll put the links on our website as well, in the description as well. Please do access them. I think the support that the NHS is providing for leaders at the moment is really essential, especially if you're thinking of yourself and developing through your role. It's always good to give you that time and space to think about how developing and, and think about your well-being and your mental health along your journey for your career. So I access some of this for being part of um, the health and wellbeing lead for the training hub team. And we did a one-to-one -one, um, coaching session with an expert. And then I, I went on to then do a group coaching session with everyone. And I think we've all found that really useful and helpful to actually um, take that time out and support each other. Oh, that's brilliant. Sounds, sounds like it was really useful to you. So colleagues working in health and social care can access support developed by the Department of Health and Social Care. Corrie, what specific support is available to staff in social care? So there's mental health apps that are available, the support lines and there's bespoke online platform. So you can access this on the wellbeing support option on the www.england.nhs.uk slash people. Because I'm, because I'm uh, the health and wellbeing lead for the training hub, I've actually had a look at the mental health resilience hub for our local area. And I've also been on the other ones within the Northwest um, training area. And they're all absolutely amazing spaces to go and have a look at. Yeah, that sounds great, Corey. The hubs are confidential and free of charge for all healthcare staff and can offer a clinical assessment and supported referral to the support that you need, such as talking therapy or counselling. Yeah, the resilience hubs have been set up to provide healthcare colleagues with rapid access to local evidence-based mental health service and support where needed. They're really useful yeah, Corey, I find that really great that, it, you know, it, it's local as well, local mental health. That is that just gives that more personalised approach. I really like the idea of that. Because we're all um, a Northwest training hubs, where can we look for the support for our local area? So, Corey, you can find it on the same website, www.england.nhs.uk slash people. If you go on the health and wellbeing section, under support now on Northwest Hubs, it has the Greater Manchester Resilience Hub and the Lancashire and South Cumbria Psychological Resilience Hub. Great access on there. I know you had a look yourself as well. The Cheshire and Merseyside Resilience Hub is coming soon. Aside from all the support offers that are, that are out there at the moment, there are also the offers that are there all the time. Like, yeah, Every Mind Matters, your Live Well, your National Health and Wellbeing Support for our NHS people. NHS app library which finds apps and online tools to help manage your health and well-being and they're available all the time they're always there and you and we'll put the links on our website for you to have a look where they are yeah so we'll put them on our website um, also they are all available on the NHS website we will put the direct links on our website is www.lsctub.co.uk and you can find that under health and well-being We'll also put um, descriptions, any useful links, anything we've discussed about our podcast under that section on our website. It's been great chatting to you today, Summer, about this on the podcast uh, so that everyone can see what is available for them, not only for the health and wellbeing, for, but for other areas as well. 
yeah it's been brilliant um it's been a great first podcast if you are still listening thank you for listening all the way through thank you for your support we really hope that we did make an impact on you listening your team if you found anything useful on there please do share it on within the nhs staff and community um, and externally as well a lot of these resources are available externally yeah and if you don't use them yourself uh, you can you can advocate use for other people if you know that other people might want to use them it's a great way of sharing the information out across um, even one of your colleagues somebody else that within the NHS that you think might find them useful just pass it all on pass the information out even the podcast on we are really passionate for health and well-being Corrie is our lead for health and well-being at the training hub if you have any questions, you can send your emails through to lsc.th at nhs.net. Just ask for myself, Summer or Corrie. We're happy to answer any questions. If you're struggling to find the links, anything on our website, we're happy to help. And we hope to see you soon at our upcoming webinars. Um, so keep an eye out on our website and um, we hope to see you soon. Yeah, take care, everyone.